In this session we're going to look at another repetitious structure. Before we've looked at the fixed loop repetition, where it does it for a fixed amount of time, we're now going to look at one of the conditionals. The conditional we're going to look at is known as a pretest loop. Pretest means to check it before we do it. In syntax, this would be known as a while statement. So while x is equal to a particular thing, it'll carry it out. Until such time x is no longer equal to that, and then it will move on in its code. So to give you an idea, in our pseudocode we've actually got begin a. While x is greater than 0, we do something. In this case we would do b. But when x is no longer greater than 0, so maybe it's equal to 0, or it's less than 0, like negative 1, it would then stop doing b and actually go and do c. To give you an idea in some code, while number is less than or equal to 50, do. Print the number, let the number equals the number plus 10, and it'll keep doing that. If the number starts at 10, first time through, because the number is less than or equal to 50, it'll actually do this section. It'll actually add 10 to it. So second time through, it's 20 now. Third time through, it'll be 30. Fourth time through, 40. And because 50 is equal to 50, it'll actually carry out this loop once more. But once it becomes 60, it's no longer less than or equal to 50, and therefore is greater than, it'll then jump over the while structure and actually just print out finished. So you can see that the while statement is a handy statement for programs to keep doing things over again. So in a arcade sort of game, while players live is greater than greater than zero. Because once it's equal to zero, it could stop. So if a player keeps playing and they score extra lives and they go from three lives to four lives to five lives, the game will keep going until the lives get or the life count gets down to zero. So a while statement is useful. So to move into the structure you can actually see here that black calls red, but it does it for a condition. Condition has a curved line where a fixed iteration has a straight line. It's a pretest loop because it's at the start of the line. If it's at the end of the line, it will be known as a post-test, which we'll look in the next session. So a pretest loop occurs at the start of a curved line. So the solution for this one will be begin black, while test equals true, do red, end while, then it will call white, blue, and black. What I want to do in this session is I actually want to look at the more complex question, which is the last question on the paper. You notice in this structure we have all the different things we've looked at so far in these tutorials. We have multi-layered, we have fixed iteration, we have a pretest loop, we also have a decision with a pretest in it. So we're going to have a look at a solution for this one here. And then you'll be able to go back and complete the other tasks in reverse. So let's insert a text box and get underway of solving this one. You'll notice that the first thing we need to do is start with begin hard drive. And therefore we also need to end hard drive. One of the first structures is this for do loop. Because it travels across all these legs, it means all of these boxes are part of this for do loop structure. So the first thing I'm going to put in here is for five times do. I'll turn my caps lock off too. Now, what is it going to do for five times? First thing it's going to do is store. It's going to do sector. It's going to do track. It's also going to do remove. And we need to end the four. Now, I'll just indent these so they make a little more sense. We can't stop there because it's not the end of the function. We've also got this pretest loop in here. Now, you remember from our pretest loop, we're going to use a while statement or while do statement. Now the while statement covers two legs as well. So we need to come in where it fits in, so after sector and before track, and we need to enter in while info equals true. We then carry out this loop. 
So we've got track and we've got remove. Once we've finished that, we can then end the wild loop. And we can end the for loop because the for loop also concludes there before we exit that procedure. So you notice now we've got an embedding of structures. We have a for do loop with a while loop inside. And the program will sequence that in the same order. The next part when we look at sector being another function that calls more functions, so it's a sub part of our main program hard drive. So we need to begin sector. We also need to end sector. Now once we begin sector, you notice we've actually got an if statement. So in this case here, we should be going if A is greater than full, we then do error. And because it has a false branch, we have an else part. and then we can end our if statement. Now, we've also got this max is greater than less than true. Now the if statement's going to drive which leg we go down. Depending as we go down each leg, while max is not equal to true, it's going to keep looping that function. So with inside the then part, we need to place a while statement. So while max not equal to true and what I'll do here is I'll actually drop down our point size while max is not equal to true we're going to carry out error and then we'll end while now this has no effect on this if statement because if it is true, it's then going to carry out the while part. And if it's false, once again, I'm just going to copy these out and paste them in here. It'll still carry out the function as it's intended to do. and we still have the end if and end sector. So you can actually see now that the actual program is still written up as it appears here, but it's broken down into pseudocode, which makes more logical sense when we read through it. And from the structure chart, we can group like functions together. And so this could be a random number, and in there would be a random number generator, and we'd actually call that, and then move on. So you can actually see that we can embed and nest different structures together to actually create more complex code. So it's now up to you to go through and complete the previous tasks.